everyone! Welcome to what has probably been the most prominent question on my channel since I first made it. That being, how did I go about learning Japanese with visual novels? In my big VN series I made over two years ago? During day two of Z Memories, I mentioned how Gaozu Island was the first visual novel I read from beginning to end after having taught myself some basic Japanese. Since then, I've received plenty of comments from time to time asking how I went about learning Japanese, how I tackled the dreaded kanji, and all that. It's been quite some time since then, but I figured it'd be a fun topic to finally get down to answering, so here we are. I'll talk a bit about why I bothered doing it in the first place, how I went about learning Japanese from next to nothing, and what I recommend nowadays. I will assume that, like me at the time, your knowledge of Japanese is limited to watching subbed anime, and playing Japanese translated visual novels. So my Japanese learning journey started quite a long time ago. Way back in the day, unlike current times, there were barely any visual novels officially translated. Just like with the incredibly early days of anime in the West, the big groups at the time, Jazz USA, G Collections, and Manga Gamer, weren't really translating any good visual novels. Most of them were just translating stuff that I guess they easily got the rights for, stuff like Lightning Warrior Raidi, Yojinbo, Snow Sakura, Moero Downtown, and Exchange off the top of my head. The visual novels of any real substance weren't translated by any of the official groups, but mostly done by passionate fan translators. Stuff like Fate Stay Night, Tsukihime, Sengoku Rants, and Ever 17 just for example. While there wasn't too much of a selection back then, I was pretty content playing whatever was out there. Then I ran into a fan translation that was so terrible that even though I barely knew Japanese, I could already tell there was something seriously wrong. I was so taken aback by how bad it was that I thought, heck, even I could translate this better. And so began my Japanese learning journey. I later learned that the translation in question was a joke one, I believe, but I figured at that point, regardless, it would be better to learn a new language anyway so that I could play whatever I wanted, as opposed to having to wait for some kind soul willing to translate it. Nowadays, visual novels have gotten quite a lot bigger than they were way back when. Many of the most renowned visual novels like Soko Akimiramasa, Balder Sky, Love Love Alternative, and Umi Neko have officially been translated, which seemed almost impossible two decades ago. Even from a console game perspective, many video games tend to get global releases nowadays, unlike way back in the day where tons of games tended to be region locked to Japan. Same with light novels and even manga. Still, if you are looking for something a tad bit more obscure, then that's still a great reason to learn Japanese, and even if you don't have anything in mind, there isn't anything bad about learning an entirely new language for your own benefit. I'll be blunt here, learning a new language is never going to be easy, but that doesn't mean it can't be fun. And what is more fun than learning something that you can use to play the things you love and already have an active interest in? I'll be using Japanese visual novels as the base here to talk about my points, but you can use the exact same process to read manga or play console games or some obscure RPG Maker games from the dark pits of the internet. Whatever floats your boat. The main point is that you have a good time doing it, so you actually stick with it. What I did might not necessarily work for you, but if you want to use it as a guideline to start your own Japanese learning journey, feel free. From this point on, I'll split the steps I took into three distinct sections. The alphabet, hiragana, katakana, kanji, talking about the importance of grammar, and finally the last section where we talk about the fun part, text hookers and actually playing visual novels. I'll mention what I personally did at the time, and my opinions on maybe what I change nowadays to be more efficient in hindsight. I'd also like to mention that everything you learn in this process will not teach you how to become a master at speaking Japanese, nor will you be able to suddenly live in Japan after doing any of this. All we'll be focused on will be purely reading so that we can read our favorite visual novels or video games or manga. Stuff like writing and speaking are things you can improve through self-learning, but I'd recommend getting a teacher or a kind friend for that sort of thing, as the best way to improve on that end is by actually doing it, and that especially goes for speaking. Okay, so the reason why we start with incredibly boring things like the alphabet and grammar rules is that every bit of foundation you build in the beginning will exponentially benefit yourself when we start actually reading visual novels. While there are ways to put visual novels into text hookers that automatically machine translate all the text, and machine translations are infinitely better than they used to be back in the day, I highly do not recommend this process for several reasons. 
One, machine translations are still kind of iffy. If you are out here looking to play obscure Japanese games, you definitely already know what I mean, having played some terribly machine translated games yourself. Japanese doesn't translate to English very well, considering sentence structure, tons of grammar rules, and just basic cultural ideas that aren't as prevalent in English. Two, we're here to learn Japanese, and while machine translations do have their place, it's too easy to end up using them as a crutch if you don't already have a good grasp of the language. Many of the translations will be wrong for several reasons, and if you don't even have any idea why they are wrong, you'll probably just end up internalizing a ton of misinformation. While there is a lot of room for interpretation when it comes to Japanese to English, you still gotta at least be somewhat in the same ballpark. I'll talk a lot more about this when we actually get into playing visual novels. Anyways, to avoid all of this, we have to set up a strong foundation from the outset so that we can use visual novels as learning stepping stones as opposed to giant brick walls that will intimidate us into giving up from the very beginning. And to start off, the most basic foundation for any language is of course, the alphabet, which is obviously where I began my learning as well. For Japanese, that consists of hiragara, katakana, and kanji, which tends to scare people. But I'll explain why it isn't that scary of an issue at the end of this section. Regardless of wherever we go from here, you have to reach a point where you are easily able to recognize the entire alphabet. While it might seem kinda scary staring at these two graphs, it really isn't that bad. Hiragata and Katakana both use the exact same vowels and letters, so you'll notice looking at these two sheets that they have the exact same number of characters. Hiragana is used for nearly everything, while Katakana is used pretty much exclusively for loan words from other languages, so stuff like Gravity Launcher will be written out in Katakana like Gravity Launcher. As a fun side note, most broken stilted language parts, like for beaten up robots, are also written out in katakana to sound incredibly alien or weird. Anywho, with that in mind, we'll focus on hiragana first. So again, here are all the characters we need to memorize. While it looks complicated at first, it's quite a bit simpler than you think. Basically, there are five important vowels, just like in English. A, E, U, A, O. Every subsequent column will be these same five vowels with one letter added to the front. So the second is K, Kaki Kuke Ko, the third is S, Sashi Suse So, and so on. There are some outliers, for instance, here instead of Tit, as you might imagine, it's Ch, and for H instead of Hu, it's Fu. But for the most part, everything else follows this pattern. So the rest will be Tachi Sute To, Nani Nune No, Hahi Fuhe Ho, Mami Mume Mo, Ya Yu Yo, Rari Rure Ro, and finally, Wa Wo N. No matter what, we have to reach the point where when you see any of these characters, you know right away whether that character is a Mu or a Me. Everyone learns differently, personally I'm terrible at memorization, so what I did was take a piece of paper out and write each character one by one, pronouncing it while I did so. Flashcards are always an option as well, or maybe you can just stare at it and your brain just clicks. Whatever works for you. Once we got that down, we can talk about these modifiers, stuff like quotation marks and circle thingies. These modifiers change the first letter so to speak, so the quotation marks on a K character will turn it into a G character, so Ka turns into Ga. S turns into Z, so Sa becomes Za, Ta to D, Ta becomes Da, H into B, Ha becomes Ba. This circle modifier is easier since it only exists for the H character, so H turns into P, so Ha becomes Pa. As you can see, once you have the base characters down, it's easy to realize how everything lines up. When you see the He with a circle, you realize H into P, so P as in Pikachu. Finally, we have these three letter combos, which you see a mini Y character at the end of a normal character. They basically just replace the last letter, so instead of reading this as Bia, we read it as Bia, like Biako. Once we have all of that memorized, congratulations, now we can do the exact same thing for Katakana as it's all the same rules and pronunciations. So at this point, you've memorized all that Hiragata and Katakana, as in you pause the video and practice for days writing yourself, or maybe you're a savant and figured out just by staring at the sheet once. Personally, it took me quite a while. So finally, we can talk about kanji, the scariest part to most people. Kanji is a borrowed writing system from Chinese, so if you know Chinese, you can kind of guess the meaning just by looking at the characters. Kanji can be pronounced many different ways depending on which kanji they are put together with, or just off of themselves. At this point, if you were in a formal class setting, you would slowly learn new kanji as you practice speaking and going through practice scenarios. However, since we're doing this on our own time, we are instead going to learn all of the kanji, and how to pronounce them while playing visual novels thanks to several tools that I will introduce in the final section. At this point, having just memorized the alphabet, we can finally start to tackle the second most important thing before actually reading visual novels, 
Grammar. Grammar is insanely important because unlike kanji, which we'll be learning as we play visual novels, grammar is unfortunately something that you just have to learn separately. It's also the part that most machine translations potentially mess up. I unfortunately will not be able to teach you all the Japanese grammar you need to know in this video. If I try to do so, this part of the video would easily be hours long. And also, I'd most definitely miss tons of stuff because honestly, my Japanese grammar isn't the best either. What I will do instead is suggest to you some resources you can utilize to learn basic grammar. My first suggestion for those who want a less intensive understanding of Japanese grammar is to read through a Japanese 1 and 2 learning textbook used in either high school or university. While I think school classes go at a glacial pace, the books themselves, when used correctly, are a great resource. These textbooks are all directed towards people learning Japanese for the first time, so they start from incredibly basic baby steps. You don't have to go through it at the same pace as a classroom, and you can skip all the practice sessions. Rather, just focus on internalizing and memorizing all the grammar rules each new chapter presents. Feel free to follow the exercises as well if you think it'll help you retain the knowledge. If you got any friends who have old textbooks they don't use anymore, go ahead and borrow from them and check it out. Let's say, however, that you do not know anybody with these sorts of Japanese learning books. If so, we can rely on online alternatives. What I use in conjunction with older books, and which I still think is a decent resource, is Tai Kim's Guide to Japanese Grammar. It's a free online resource to a ton of Japanese grammar in a really compact way. There is a physical book you can purchase, but the online version has all the same content and is entirely free. It's most definitely not perfect. The Gob Haruko is a famous example that everyone likes to point out among others as being kind of iffy, but as a quick beginner entry point into grammar, I think it functions quite well. That said, nowadays there are tons of other Japanese grammar resources out there, such as Imabi, which is like Tai Kim, but much more in-depth than on steroids, and Wasabi, which is another basic beginner's course, just to name a few. So take your pick on whichever you like to check out. I'll be using Tai Kim as an example here, mostly since it's what I use for my first time. Ideally, in the future, you go back and cross-reference other grammar websites aside from just Tai Kim, but let's stick with getting our foot in the door for now. Tai Kim's grammar guide really gets straight to the point. While it does have a few examples and does stuff like introducing new kanji with every chapter, it tries to convey each rule in as few words as possible. Although the guide looks intimidating when taking a look at how many sections there are, it's not too bad as a hoe. You can skip the first section as it just covers hiragara, katakata, and kanji, and you definitely don't have to read all of it. I will however mention that at least try to finish both the basic grammar and essential grammar sections. The more you read, the better foundation you'll build for yourself when you start diving into visual novels. When I first started learning Japanese, I used a really ancient Japanese learning book that was over 30 years old, and Tai Kim's grammar guide before it got turned into this much cleaner format. I took the time to read through a good chunk of it at least once, as well as practice and review each section as I went through. I think overall I spent roughly 1-2 to two months learning Japanese before I dived into my very first visual novel, Gaozu Island. About 3 weeks of memorizing hiragana and katakana, and the remaining time just purely on grammar. I ain't the brightest tool in the shed though, so perhaps it'll be an easier time when you try to learn. As I mentioned earlier, while we will be learning a ton of new kanji by playing visual novels with the assistance of tuos, grammar rules and sentence structures aren't something we will be picking up. Try to build the best foundation you can, but also realize that you don't need to expect yourself to master the entire Japanese language before you play a visual novel. Rather, just try to get familiar with a lot of the grammar rules, so that once you start seeing them in the visual novels, you have a pretty good idea of what each sentence means. We can and will be going back later anyways to refresh on any new grammar rules we will see in the future. Finally, welcome to part 3 of this video on learning Japanese with visual novels. Here we finally get to the part that everyone is waiting for, the one where we talk about actually playing visual novels and learning Japanese with the help of text hookers. At this point, I'm going to assume that you have a pretty good foundation where you can read and recognize all the different hiragata and katakana characters, and you are somewhat familiar with the grammar rules. The biggest problem left is just all of those pesky kanjis and actually putting all this learning into practice. Luckily, with the help of text hookers, we can kill two birds with one stone. With text hookers, we'll be able to instantly pull out any word or kanji you want to look up in a visual novel and easily find a definition source from JM Dict, as well as how to say it. JM Dict is an online dictionary that many find to be one of the best when it comes to specifically looking up kanji, the different ways to say it, and their varied meanings. 
There are many different free third-party text hookers out there for the public to download, each with their own perks and faults. I've used quite a few of them over the years, from the OG ITH or Interactive Text Hooker, to VNR or Visual Novel Reader, Translator Aggregator or whatnot. I won't recommend specifics since the preferred tool tends to change over the years. That said, I will be using TextRactor for this example as our text hooker, and JL as the clipboard grabber and dictionary lookup thing. TextRactor's job is to hook into the exe file and pull out the text into a readable format. It works pretty much straight off the GitHub file where you would start up the program, start up the game, and attach TextRactor to the exe file. Immediately, it should go through a ton of different texts in the game. From that point, click once or twice to get through a line, then try and find the right hook which will show the text. While it isn't common, there are some games where it doesn't work straight off the bat. In that scenario, you usually have to find a specific hook online using an H code. Alternatively, you could try using the Visual Novel OCR tool or VN Optical Character Recognition. Personally, I find it way too finicky trying to use it, so I never bothered, but it's just an option in case nothing else works. In any case, once we get TextRactor working and on the proper hook, it should now automatically copy any text that shows up. Now we need to boot up our Japanese kanji lookup tool, in this case, JL. Personally, I've used Nazuka and Ikai-chan before, and they've also been pretty great. All of these tools perform the same job, although some have tons of customization you can get into later if you are interested. But the basic is that it will auto-copy the clipboard text and by hovering your mouse over each kanji, you can get an immediate description of the kanji and how to pronounce it in hiragana. Most of these programs on default take definitions from JMDict, at this point, it's just a matter of reading each new line and looking up all the unfamiliar kanji one by one. While your reading at first will probably go pretty slow, as you read more and more, you'll start to recognize and remember how to say most of the different kanji. Some of these different text programs allow options like show furigana on top or separate grammar particles from kanji. Personally, I think all of that is extra and honestly gets a little distracting. It's best just to keep it simple, especially when you're first starting out. In the future, you can start messing with all of the other features, like for instance, once you are really confident in your Japanese, you can then transition to using monolingual dictionaries instead of bilingual ones, but that's way in the future. I wouldn't bother with it until you're able to read sentences without any aid whatsoever. Anywho, yeah, at this point, it's just a matter of throwing yourself into new visual novels repeatedly until you hammer everything home. Don't be discouraged when it takes a pretty long time to go through each sentence. When I first played Gaozu Island, I was sitting there for minutes at a time, looking through each sentence one by one, saying the lines out loud, checking the kanji, memorizing how to pronounce it, repeating the character's voice line over and over to really get it. And you can clearly see that the Gaozu Island text is pretty simple for the most part. It might be slow going, but as I stuck around with it, I got more comfortable and more familiar with trying to read it. As for what game you should pick, just because I played Gazu Island does not mean I recommend it. Rather, I recommend that you pick your first Japanese visual novel to read based on three things. First is simplicity. Don't pick a visual novel that's too esoteric. You don't want to be spending 30 minutes on each sentence trying to decipher stuff that's going to be incredibly specific to a single story. Try to keep it simple, and I would say avoid super technical science fiction sort of visual novels at first. Second, try to pick one that isn't too long. You don't want to dive into an 80 hour visual novel in a language you can't read because chances are it'll be months before you ever finish the game, and most likely you'll end up dropping it due to how long it is. Finally, Third and most important of all, make sure the visual novel you are picking is something you are interested in. None of what I said previously matters if you yourself don't actually want to read the visual novel. While yes, I picked Gaozu Island because it was pretty simplistic, it was also an Alisoft product, and I generally liked Alisoft's gameplay side of things, so I want to check it out. As long as you aren't throwing yourself into the absolute deep end, you'll probably be chilling. Also, bonus point, I recommend a visual novel with some gameplay just to break up huge bouts of reading so that it keeps you engaged, but that's only if you like that sort of thing. Learning a language is never going to be easy, but hopefully by doing it with something you already love, it can still be a fun process as well. I won't say my way is the golden way or anything. Much of what I did and used has had massive improvements over the years. However, if hearing about it has inspired your own journey into Japanese, then that's all I can ask for. Remember, 
take it slow, and have a good time. We're playing visual novels first and foremost to enjoy great stories we otherwise wouldn't be able to. I also recommend reading whatever you like, whether it be visual novels, web novels, light novels, console games, manga, PC games, or that weird RPG Maker game that came out in 2006. You have an infinite number of choices, it's just a matter of getting down to it. If you got any specific questions you'd like to ask me, feel free to do so down in the comments below, and I'll try to answer what I can. If you enjoyed what you saw, feel free to do all the supportive stuff, like, subscribe, notifications, and with that, I'll see you later. Till next time.